All right, today we're going to learn about the Maya and the Aztec. We have two daily objectives. Number one, explain what led to the collapse of Mayan civilization. And number two, explain why the Aztec engaged in human sacrifice. So these are two civilizations um, that were created in Central America, modern day Central America. So in and around modern Mexico. So all the way back in unit one, we talked about all the different places that agriculture popped up on its own. Remember that the first place was Mesopotamia in the Middle East, the second was Egypt, the third was India, the fourth was China, the fifth was Mesoamerica, and that's what we're talking about today, which again, we're talking about modern Mexico. And this is going to be where the Maya and the Aztecs live. We also have in the Andean region, the Incas are going to create agriculture, um, and these guys are going to communicate and trade with each other, but that's separate. Today we're mostly going to focus on the Maya and the Aztec. All right, so the Maya lived in southern Mexico and into northern Central America. Um, they blended cultures with a society called the Olmec, which are kind of like the founding fathers of Mesoamerican culture. Um, by 250 CE, they are a flourishing civilization. And kind of like the Mesopotamians, actually, Maya lived in city-states and were ruled by god kings. So these are theocracies, but these theocracies are built around dynasties. So the eldest son of the god king would become the next god king. Uh, over here on the right is a Mayan calendar. They had an extremely sophisticated calendar because they were probably the best astronomers in the world until modern day. So we, we know a lot about the Maya because they build lots of giant pyramids, temples, and palaces that are still around. This one is still around in modern Mexico. You can go visit these places. Um, they were polytheists, so their king was only one god that they believed in, and they believed both in good and bad gods, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they were largely supported by agriculture and trade. They traded a lot with the Incas to the south, as well as the Native Americans to the north. Um, and of course, they're doing lots of farming. Now, one of the really cool things about the Maya is they use cacao, or chocolate beans, as money. So chocolate is originally from the Americas. Um, it, it, it does not make its way to Europe until after Columbus. And the Maya are actually using it as money, which is pretty cool. So again, the Maya were master astronomers. They correctly calculated the solar year to be 365 days. Um, they had an incredibly advanced written language. It included over 800 hieroglyphic symbols. If you're on the right, we can see some symbols that kind of sort of represent English letters, maybe. Um, ultimately, the Maya collapsed because of overpopulation, over farming, and civil war between the city-states. Um, so basically what happens is they do not understand crop rotation. They have not invented that. Uh, as a result, they keep farming the same land year after year after year after year, and eventually that soil runs out of nutrients. Um, but at the same time, their population is growing because they have all this food, and eventually the fields are giving them less and less crops, and now you have all these people that need all this food that they don't have, and this leads to war between the city-states. Next we have the Aztec. So the Aztec come, are, were originally nomads from the deserts of Mexico up here. And they moved down to the Valley of Mexico down here. The Valley of Mexico is really cool because it has lots of lakes, lots of resources, and fertile soil. And they established their capital known as Tenochtitlan, which is near modern Mexico City. Again, that's Tenochtitlan. That doesn't sound like Spanish because they don't speak Spanish. Spanish doesn't come until the Spanish come. Uh, so Tenochtitlan is uh, the mo modern is modern Mexico City down here. Um, it is the major Aztec city with over 400,000 people, which is a ton of people for this period. They controlled a major trade network between natives to the north and Inca to the south, just like the uh, Maya originally did. And they are the military superpower of Mesoamerica. They have these guys called jaguar warriors, which are literally guys who the only way to become a jaguar warrior is to go out into the jungle by yourself and kill a jaguar and bring back the pelt. Uh, so these guys are really scary and really crazy. Now the Aztecs, being the military superpower of Mesoamerica, use military might to force neighboring states to pay tribute or die. Um, we've got the social hierarchy over here on the right. you got the king or high priest at the top, followed by the council. Um, those guys are also priests and generally part of the royal family, so like his uncles, cousins, that kind of thing. Under them are nobles. Under them are merchants and artisans. Remember, that's like blacksmiths and stuff. And under them, we have commoners, which are farmers, and then even slaves. So this is a slave-owning society, 
mostly, like most of the other societies we've learned about, these are uh, men who have been captured in war and turned into slaves. But this is what the Aztec and Maya social hierarchy pretty much look like. Um, ultimately, they're ruled by an emperor, the guy at the top, and he has absolute power. So this is kind of an absolute monarchy um, for government system. Most important gods of the Aztecs was the sun god. They actually believed that the god, like, was the sun was a god. Like, the sun, like, that you can see is, is a god. Um, and that this god decided whether he or she wanted to rise and fall every day. And basically the Aztecs believed that without human sacrifice, the sun would not come up. The sun god wouldn't come. Um, and without the sun god, the crops wouldn't grow. Without the crops, they would starve to death. So... The Aztecs believed that the only way to make the sun god reappear every day was to sacrifice to the sun god in the form of human sacrifice. Um, so Aztec priests at, at the top of some of those temples I showed you back when we looked at the, the Maya would take people to the top of those, kill them, cut out their hearts, sacrifice them to the sun god, and then the sun god would come back the next day. So, pretty cool. That's the Aztecs. Now, eventually, everything changes in Mesoamerica because the Spanish show up. So, Spanish under C Christopher Columbus originally make their way to the Caribbean, and then it's just very, it's a hop, skip, and a jump from the Caribbean to Mexico. So, the Spanish under this guy over here on the right, Hernan Cortez, make it to Mexico. Um, they go to Mexico because they believe that the Aztecs control really, really big gold mines, and gold is money back then. So, the Spanish want this gold. So the Aztecs, so they had this prophecy that their god would show up, one of their gods, a um, god by the name of Quetzalcoatl, would show up magically one day from the, from the east. And then one day magically Hernan Cortez comes on a ship which seems to be flying on water, and he shows up the same day that they thought Quetzalcoatl was coming. The other crazy thing is Quetzalcoatl was actually white, and Hernan Cortez, in the eyes of an Aztec, was white. So... They literally think Hernan Cortez is Quetzalcoatl. They think he's a god. So they bring him in. Um, they treat him really well. They give him food. They give him shelter. They give him as much gold as he can find. But that's not enough. And eventually he leads his troops in, and he takes over the Aztec Empire for Spain. In the south, another Spanish explorer slash conquistador by the name of Francisco Pizarro is going to do the same thing to the Incas, minus the whole god thing. Um, so Pizarro is going to come in with... Men on horses, with guns, with ships, and take over the Incas. Take a few minutes, answer your two daily objectives.